AEW Fight Forever just put out a huge patch for players. Patch 1.03 is now live. We're going to talk about some of the highlights of the patch notes because it's a big, big list. We're going to talk about the DLC, additional attires in the game, and a little bit of Stadium Stampede 2. Now, I'll leave the link for the full breakdown of all of the patch notes in the description if you guys want to check out yourself. I'm not going to go through console by console of what has been individually fixed. We'll be here all day and you'll be gone long before then. So I'll go what's across all platforms for you. But to kick things off, off, I thought it would be a good way to start with some of the new attires that have been added into the game. So great new additions are here where we're getting updated attires for Mox, Jericho, Warlow, Trent, Luchasaurus, Jade, Cargill, and Sting. They've all received updates and updated looks that you can assign, which is a great, great free addition. 2K, take note, they added attires into the game for free. This is awesome, and this is what I think a lot of players have been hoping for, is to see these free additions and add-ons into the game. Wonderful, I hope they add in even more additional attires for wrestlers. This is great, it's not paywalled or anything, so wonderful news coming with the update. For the patch fixes and the patch notes, across all platforms, we have the following fixes. Fixed problem with overlapping models and tag team and title taking scenes. Fixed modified tag team finishers so that it can be triggered if one of the team is in the special state. They fix an error in the area of pain caused by damage. Sliding problem when climbing a barricade while holding a weapon. Being able to grapple with rudder in between. They fix dizzying when starting a grapple. Button and control settings are now saved after canceling CBR wrestler selection and going back into it. They fix issues of being unable to break a pin using a weapon attack. Clipping that occurred when grappling while climbing a ladder has been fixed. They corrected display of error codes in the switch error dialog. They fix issues with John Silver's signature move failing. They fix a bug that caused false count anywhere AIs to repeatedly perform apron slams at ringside. AIs getting stuck in a grapple and tag team, AIs getting stuck when AIs dash, kick each other, and miss. They fix the bug that allowed users to carry a burning table. They fix AIs sometimes not being able to break the pin during three-way matches. They also fix several wrestlers so that they don't jump over the top ropes when they're entering the ring, like Luchasaurus, Nyla Rose, Riho, Chris Statlander, Thunder Rosa, and Yuka Sakazaki. They fix defenders not getting up after repeatedly performing an awakening taunt. Fix that the finisher guide is not displayed as a wrestler is leaned onto a rope. Sliding Lariat, not hitting is also fixed. Cornered shoulder thrust animations now terminates on down. They fix issues where a ladder that fell on a table contact during an online match could not be picked up. Running counter signatures not activating when touching a third party during setup. AI not attacking when side by side on the apron. The AI not performing moves in enemies corners in tag team matches is fixed. They fix AI activating springboards when teammates is submitting in tag team matches. For online, when holding a two-handed weapon, they fix the animations of still holding the weapon after being attacked or dropped the weapon. Running counter moves of warping position is fixed. The AI repeatedly changing target at a tag match. AI diving on hanging opponent in the CBR. They hit collision timing on blows of moves spinning soul butt three. CM Punk combos not connecting is fixed. Clipping and setup actions when there is a height difference. Attacks not hitting against the middle rope lean has been fixed. Attacks not hitting easily after the grapple turnaround. Attacks not hitting easily in CBR and hanging state. A symptom that sometimes did not count Pinfalls in four-way matches is also fixed. Barricade reactions not triggering when attacking from the side or leaning against the barricade. Fixed clipping issue on weapon with rear shotgun drop kick. Fixed attire being released when checking wrestler info. It modified to prevent Andrade El Idolo from jumping over the ropes when entering the ring from the apron. And lastly, fixed guide HUD not showing up immediately after going into corner leaning position. There are so much more on top of that when it comes to each individual platform. So please go check out all the notes. Kudos to THQ Nordic AEW Games for the extensive patch updates and fixes. Did they add in more match types, mode updates, things of that nature? No, but this is a massive, massive push. Huge amount of fixes that I think the game really, really did need. So I commend them for putting all of this together. It takes time to get a lot of stuff done, I understand that, but hopefully this makes the gameplay experience for players overall a lot smoother and a lot better. Now, when it comes to the DLC, there is no confirmed date yet for when it's going to be released. However, we do have a little bit more insight into the upcoming DLC for Keith Lee and the Bunny. Number one, the models for Keith Lee and the Bunny have surfaced online, so you can see Keith Lee's model here. I think it looks excellent, and I think the actual facial textures capture of Keith Lee's DLC model looks really, really awesome. And then we also have the Bunny. 
The bunny model here in this image anyways doesn't look complete. Honestly, it could just be an early rendered image and we gotta wait till the final product comes out until we can see. But this came out alongside the patch 1.03. People have been finding it online. The other thing I found personally was I went on to a Nintendo shop to see Fight Forever being listed. And I can note that the Limitless Bunny Bundle is showing its release for August 31st, 2023. This totally can just be a placeholder. We need AEW Games and THQ Nordic to confirm the DLC release date for people. But I thought it was interesting that they do have an updated date in here for the next DLC, and that would bring it to come out next Thursday. Comment below if you think this will happen at this time. It certainly would make the most sense. All In is here. We just launched Stadium Stampede and you had a giant patch to come out too. You keep the ball rolling and the momentum going with all these updates and you release the DLC next week. It'd be a great surprise for players and for those that have bought the DLC in the season pass. Now, the time of this recording, we just finished playing up Stadium Stampede for the first time. I played 10 or so matches online, and my overall impression is that Stadium Stampede is okay. I think the addition of a Battle Royale game in a wrestling game like this is great. I think it's a wonderful addition, different than what 2K does. You can select any wrestler, you can put your creator wrestler in there. You got progression systems, you got abilities, stuff to unlock, cash to earn. Stadium Stampede environment is a lot of fun where you've got horses and you can get into the golf carts, endless weapons, and you're doing matches with up to 30 players. Some of the issues, at least for day one, as I played this, connecting to the server has been a problem. I've sat in the lobby for five to eight minutes at a time in some cases, but it is day one and the servers are probably bogged down with lots of players, but that's how my experience has been with it. It's been very slow to be able to connect online. Once I have gotten online into matches, I have zero issues with frame rates, with how it is running and stability that way. But some of the issues plaguing Stadium Stampede come in the form of hit detection, for example. Doing moves on your opponent is not very fun. And it's very tricky to be able to pull off any grappling moves and strikes onto a downed opponent you can't do. And as they're kind of standing up again, I find oftentimes it's just missing. I try to do running attacks and spears and tackles to the opponents. And more often than not, it just keeps missing. You can cheese the system pretty easily by just like smacking an opponent and running away if you want to play that way. And I believe you can get up to level 25 within Stadium Stampede to be able to level up to. And I think that players are going to be able to do that very quickly. I got to level nine or 10 just within about three hours of play. If you have Fight Forever, it's obviously totally worth checking out to see if you enjoy it. If you like to do a battle royale mode like this with wrestlers, it's totally a mode where you're gonna be able to jump in, do a couple of rounds, and then just jump out and go play something offline. I hope to see future support for Stadium Stampede. It's day one, there's going to be issues and hiccups, obviously, but some of the big things like the collision detection, targeting is an issue. Those things take me out of the experience and it becomes less and less fun. But the patch notes are a welcome surprise. They are extensive and I give the developers big kudos for that. The additional attires for some of the wrestlers is great as well because it's not just one per wrestler, it's multiple. That's a huge win. Stadium Stampede is a fine addition to be able to round out the overall experience. And that second round of DLC might be on its way sooner rather than later. But comment below if all of this is enough to keep you playing AEW Fight Forever. What else do you want to see from the game itself? Drop a like on this video. I will see you on the next one. Bye.